Welcome to the Sinister Seymour Show. Now, here he is, the master of the macabre, the epitome of evil, the most sinister man to crawl on the face of the earth, your host, Seymour. <laughs> Hello, fringies. Well, if idiots grew on trees, this place would be an orchard. Obviously, you have nothing better to do with your time because you're watching me. Anyways, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. I would like to, but it's not my style. Tonight, we have a real kicker for you. Yes, a true screamer, fringies. Tonight, we'll be talking with a real frightful fellow himself, Mr. Eric Nix, an event producer from the famous California favorite, Not Scary Farm. On top of that, I'm going to be showing you some more meaningless slides from my vacation this summer. Because the last thing you need to see is more meaningless photos from people you don't care about. Right? Right. It's sure to be a bow. You'll like it. I won't. Let's get started, shall we, fringies? Well, folks, it is summer vacation. And with that being said, I think we could all use a little bit more fun this summer. So I took a trip down to the beach. It was very pleasant. Well, as pleasant as it could be in times like this. <laughs> I tried to make the most of it. Well, I'd like to share with you some footage from my trip. Brush! Roll the film! Well, fringies, first I had to wear a mask. Safety's of the utmost importance. Now I see everybody wearing these drab little things, basic blue surgical masks or cloth masks to cover their nose and mouth. Why well, just stop there? I tried to have some fun with it. After all, a mask is still a mask. Once I arrived at the beach, I seemed to blend right into the crowd. Overall, it was a fun day. Ah, who am I kidding? Is that summer anymore? It's September. There's a breeze in the air that crisps the leaves they step on. The days are getting darker and dreary. And God forbid another teenage girl posts a pumpkin spice latte on her Instagram. We've seen enough of those. Give it a rest. It's fall, which means the best time of year is fastly approaching. However, this Halloween will be different. Many large-scale events are being canceled. Where are we to turn? Well, dummies, coming up next, we have a really special interview with Mr. Eric Nix from Not Scary Farm. It's a terrific interview, and you won't want to miss it, so stay tuned. First off, I've been getting countless people asking me why it is I'm back on the air nearly 50 years later. Honestly, I can care less and so should you. Well folks, the real scare here is this whole COVID-19 thing that people keep talking about. And I thought the spooks on this show were scary, but apparently not. You know, a study by Forbes came out that said that 48% of people are feeling less productive working from home. What does this mean about the other 52%? Does this mean that there are people who actually enjoy this working from home thing? Well. If you're one of those people in that percentage, let me tell you something. You may love your life, but I think you're supposed to be friends. Well, on that note, more people watching television, more people have seen commercials. I've never understood these commercials myself. They're always a bit tad too upbeat. They always feature some smiley housewife with some fancy cleaning products, and the only thing I want to buy, the meds are clearly on. Yes, yes folks, with everyone trapped inside their homes, they have resulted in many different forms of entertainment. As many, Many things have been cancelled, even half a year after this whole thing began. Why is it that everything we love is either unhealthy, addictive, or some sort of restraining order against you? I, I, I. Well, dummies, we have a real treat for you. For 47 years, Knott's Berry Farm has celebrated the Halloween season every year by transferring their funny farm to a nightmarish land of terror, known as Knott's Scary Farm. Today, 
We've been able to drag over a man who serves as event producer for Nuts. He's helped create so many shows, attractions, and mazes, and so much more over Not Scary Farm. Without any further hesitation, Mr. Eric Nix, everybody. Mr. Mr. Nix. Mr. Eric Nix. Mr. It's a piece of junk, it's more like it. Eric! Good to have him on the show. Thanks, Seymour, for having me on. I can't believe you're back on the air. This is awesome to be on your new show. Thank you. It definitely feels peculiar to return after so long. So your work as an event producer Knott's Berry Farm. What does that entail? Well, Seymour, being producer at Not Scary Farm, I essentially make sure that the demented designs that come from our scenic designers are implemented in the park. I make sure that the designs come in uh, on time, on budget, and with the creative intent that the designers have set forth. It's certainly a lot of work. Uh, not only do I take care of Scary Farm, but I also take care of all the other live entertainment productions that happen at Not Scary Farm as well. Very interesting. You know, a lot of people don't know about your background. Tell us how you got into doing all this. Well, Seymour, I've actually been in themed entertainment for over 20 years now. I started back in 1997 working at a theme park down the street from Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, I actually worked at Disneyland for a little while. I worked at Walt Disney Imagineering, and then I came over to Knott's Berry Farm and started working with the entertainment team there back in 2017. And I've been there ever since. I absolutely love working at Knott's Berry Farm, and especially Knott's Scary Farm, because I love bringing all those nightmares to life. Fascinating. Now, I haven't been to the Scary Farm of yours in many years. Being almost 50 years after this event first started, what's changed? What should someone who hasn't been there to your haunt in a long time expect from it now? And what would you recommend for first-timers? Well, Seymour, if you haven't been for almost 50 years, I can say a lot has changed at Not Scary Farm over the years. You know, it really started back in the 70s as just a way for Walter Not to bring in a few extra folks during the off season, which was Halloween. And essentially he distributed some uh, Planet of the Apes masks to, to some folks. And uh, basically they would hide in the mine ride and jump out at folks and scare people. We've gotten a lot more sophisticated since then. We take better part of every year to design every single one of our mazes and make sure that we are fine-tuning those uh, terrifying experiences that everyone gets to walk through. Uh, for a first-timer, you know, I don't know if I could pinpoint one thing that you need to see. You have to see it all. But what's really changed over the years is that we've created Not Scary Farm and we've crafted it in such a way that the entire park is an attraction in itself. There's no safe spot in between those mazes or as you're walking through the scare zones. And we love now tying together the storylines uh, of the mazes, the shows, uh, and the scare zones all together, telling one overall narrative. Uh, people just really seem to enjoy that. And as mentioned earlier, the 50th anniversary of this Halloween haunt is nearing close in a few years. How has this amazing event been able to thrive for so long? What makes it able to last for nearly half a century later? Well, I think our longevity has to do with the idea that we create all of our own ideas. We don't rely on movie IP or working with studios. We really craft our stories from top to bottom uh, in-house. And I think that really stands the test of time because movies can come and go. Some movies become classics, some become cult classics, and everyone loves to watch them over and over in our mazes because they're so original and we get to craft those from, from scratch. I think that's really what brings Not Scary Farm to the table and really sets us apart from some of our other competitors. And just a final note here. Continuing that topic, your scary farm has changed so much since 1973 to include mazes and shows and so much more. It's very different 48 years later than it was back in the 1970s. As the event continues to change and evolve in the future generations, what do you think the future holds in the store? How do you think the event will be different 50 years from now? Yeah, 50 years is quite the legacy for Not Scary Farm, and 
I can't even imagine what the future holds for us, but I'm sure we will continue to strive to look at new technological advances and see how we can integrate that into our mazes and our scare zones and our shows, whether that be audio, video, or special effects. Uh, we're always gonna look for what's new and what's fun to get out in front of our guests. But really, I think at the heart of it, it's seeing generation after generation come to Scary Farm and really have a terrifying time. I can't wait to bring my son when he's old enough and when he he has kids. I hope that he gets to bring his kids to uh, Scary Farm 50 years from now and everybody gets to see how terrifying and how we evolve over the years. I think it's going to be uh, quite another 50 years. Well, Mr. Nix, I can assure you it's been a mutually unpleasant experience talking with you tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Disrespectfully yours, Seymour. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Seymour. Uh, I can definitely tell you the feeling is mutual, but uh, uh, best of luck on your new show, and uh, I hope to see you at Scary Farm. Well, Fringies, it's a kind of bore having you here this evening. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and wasting your time on this dreadful evening. I would like to, but it's not my style. Once again, I'm your host, Seymour, wishing you all a very Bad evening.